You can't expect me to believe that you don't want to know once and for all who would win, me or you. The CW is delivering Christmas presents early for fans of The Flash and Arrow this week with a two-night superhero crossover set to start tonight. And let me say right away, this highly hyped and much anticipated present is well worth opening. Whether you're a fan of the shows, the superhero genre, or you just like good TV. Now crossovers are nothing new in the world of primetime. This Flash and Arrow crossover is something fundamental to both series, both to WBTV and the CW's credits. It's like all the pieces of this first season of Flash and the three seasons of Arrow strategically slotted together to reveal the emerging hero's evolution from boys to men. The Scarlet Speedster. Any preference on how you'd like to die? We call him Captain Cold. We can talk about you giving your enemies silly code names later. Plus, as a fan of the genre, let me tell you, the first part has a great training and an equally great fight scene that reveals just how different the two heroes are. There are a lot of twists and some hefty revelations in the WBTV two-parter, none of which I intend to give away. But I will say this, despite my not so approving review of The Flash when it debuted on October 7th, one of the fast tracks of the Scarlet Speedster pilot was when he traveled to Starling City to seek advice from the much darker Archer. If that had been the thrust of The Flash premiere, I might have liked it a lot more. You're gonna run over there, you're gonna come back at me, and you're gonna get hit with an arrow. <laughs> no, I'm not. Again, no spoilers. But for all the teen angst in action, what I like about this small screen DC resurgence of late is how very modern it is. Not just with the obvious technology, but with psychology, with young men and women trying to find their way in the world, which is what this crossover drills into so securely. Plus a sense of distinct style for each show and having Flash regular Jesse L. Martin there to guide them and show these punks how it's done, which doesn't hurt at all. Now I say, why stop with just a crossover of Flash and Arrow when there is more DC on the small screen? Not sure about the fate of Constantine on NBC, but maybe next year WBTV could jump some corporate hurdles and they could convince Fox to get in this game and turn it into an annual costume crossover with Gotham. Now who wouldn't show up for that mini Justice League in action? I'm Dominic Patton for Deadline Hollywood.